sketch some vectors in the radial vector field given by the vector valued function capital F of XY defined by components XY. So the first thing that we need to do here is identify the level curve for vectors of equal magnitude. We want to identify the level curve for vectors of equal magnitude. So that means we want the magnitude of our vector field, capital vector F, to be equal to C, such that C is some arbitrary scalar. So we know, again, for this given radial field here, that it has components x, y. So we can find the magnitude of this. We have the square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to c. So now using this magnitude or these vectors of equal magnitude or equal length, we can identify the level curve or classify the level curve like we did with quadratic surfaces. So to identify the level curve here, we will square both sides of the equation, and this leaves us with our good old friend x squared plus y squared equals c squared, which we recognize as a circle centered at the origin of radius c. So now that we have identified the level curve, we're ready to start sketching vectors in the field. So you want to begin by choosing a specific value for C here. So I'm going to let C be 1. Plugging this into our level curve, we have x squared plus y squared is 1 squared, which is 1. So the level curve that we're starting with is the unit circle or unit disk. So we want to select some points or ordered pairs that exist on our level curve or the unit circle. So I'll begin with the x and y intercepts. So we've got 1, 0. We have 0, 1. We have negative 1, 0 and 0, minus 1. Each one of these ordered pairs exists on our level curve. And we use these points to find the corresponding vectors defined by the radial field, capital ve vector f of xy defined by the components xy. So plugging each ordered pair in, we have the vector field at the ordered pair 1, 0 is equal to the vector 1, 0, which is just i hat. So you have a unit vector pointing in the x direction. We have the vector field evaluated at the ordered pair 0, 1, which gives us a unit vector pointing in the positive y direction. We have the vector field evaluated at the point negative 1, 0, which gives us a unit vector pointing in the negative x direction. And then last but not least, we have the vector field evaluated at 0, negative 1, which gives us a vector, a unit vector, pointing in the negative y direction. So let's use these points to sketch a graph of our level curve here, or the vector field, excuse me, on the level curve. So here is our y-axis. Here is x. And we know we're plotting these vectors on the level curve defined by the unit circle. So again, we are plotting the vectors at each one of these points at each x and y intercept. So we can see here at the ordered pair 1, 0, 
we have a vector field, or excuse me, a vector in the field of length 1 pointing in the positive x direction. At the ordered pair 0, 1, we have a vector in this field of length 1 pointing in the y direction, positive y direction. At the ordered pair negative 1, 0, we have a vector in this field of length 1 pointing in the negative x direction. And then last but not least, we have a vector in this field at the ordered pair 0, negative 1 of length 1 pointing in the minus y direction. So the only thing that's happening here that I want you to be mindful of is that we've got some giant gaps occurring in these quadrants. So when this happens, when plotting vectors for the intercepts isn't sufficient, you want to, in addition, consider arbitrary points on the level curve in each quadrant. So this first ordered pair here is in quadrant 1, so we know both of the components will be positive. In quadrant 2, we have a negative x component, a positive y. In quadrant 3, both components are negative. And then in quadrant 4, we have a positive x and a negative y value. So let's jump down and think about these arbitrary points and what type of vector they're going to produce. So in quadrant 1, we have the ordered pair, the arbitrary ordered pair x, y, where both x and y are positive. So the vector for some point in quadrant 1, both components are positive. So that means if we think back to our sketch here, we know that this is the vector is pointing in the positive x direction and positive y direction. So it has a positive slope. For a arbitrary ordered pair x, y in quadrant 2, again, x is negative, y is positive. So we want to think about what does this vector look like? So again, using our graph here, we see that we're moving in a negative x direction and a positive y direction. So using the slope of the line, we can see we have a vector pointing up. For our arbitrary point here, x, y in quadrant 3, we know both components are, are both components of this point are negative. So we want to determine what is the vector in quadrant 3 going to look like. So again, from this arbitrary point on our level curve, we know we have a moving in the negative x direction and a negative y direction. So your vector is pointing out and down. And last but not least, we have an arbitrary ordered pair in quadrant 4. So you have a positive x and a negative y. And we want to determine what is what direction is this vector pointing at this ordered pair. So again, from this point here in quadrant 4, we know we're moving in a positive x direction and a negative y direction. So that vector is pointing down and out. So you can see here, now looking at this graph, we filled in all of those gaps for our radial vector field. So when you have a radial vector field like this, all of the vectors in this field are pointing out from the origin. And again, you can, like our last example, you can incorporate additional level curves here to see more vectors in the field, but they're always going to be pointing outwards from the origin.